beautiful, sweet. So we'll chat about a couple of things here. Sure. Um, the new album, a few tracks. There's some covers on the album. There's some COVID-19 chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what isn't there to chat about, but hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris. Today on the Rock Metal Podcast, we have Diamond Head, and they have a new album called Lightning to the Nations 2020, which, should I call it a new album? I mean, it's it's a new recording. Uh, it's Yeah, it's a new album. It is a new recording, and uh, it, it's got four bonus tracks on, so yeah, it's, a, it's sort of a new Diamond Head album. Okay, beautiful. Release on November 27th via Silver Lining Music. Right now I'm being joined by Brian, and Brian's going to share some more information about why they have no remorse this time around. <laughs> Is that the question? Is that your first question? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's funny, Brian, is as I was preparing for this interview and I was listening to the tracks, obviously I know you guys wrote the tracks, but my... I'm 35, so my generation, I heard these songs first through Metallica. Of course. Yeah, a lot of people have said that over the years. Sometimes they apologize and they say, I'm ever so sorry, but I got into Diamond Head through Metallica. <laughs> and I think it's absolutely fine as long as you got there in the end. Uh, of course, you know, the fact that Metallica covered four Diamond Head songs has only been fantastic news to us uh, and has helped keep the band going into this fourth decade uh, so yeah it, it's a great thing and um, uh, you know the, obviously the idea to, to cover one of their songs has come up and uh, I just thought it'd be a, a real you know nice like a tribute back and uh, um a respect thing, you know, they've covered down that we're going to cover Metallica. So uh, we probably, you know, could have done it years ago, but this seemed the right time. And uh, you've got to have the right singer as well. And I think Raz, Raz is such a great singer that uh, he was capable of, of doing, a, you know, a, a, a James Hetfield song or a, a Robert Plant song or a Rob Halford song. So, you know, big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm, absolutely, which takes us into the covers here briefly, because I guess my question is, why these covers? Out of all the covers in the world, I mean, Metallica, we understand, um, but Zeppelin, Deep Purple, and Priest, is it because Raz had, had joined in? Uh, it's mainly my choice. I, I chose the songs. Uh, there, there's, apart from the Metallica song, there are obviously bands who've been influential to me, uh, they're all they're all day back from the you know the, the early or mid seventies and uh, so I grew up listening to these songs and you know some like the immigrant song I've been in love with immigrant songs since I was probably twelve years old and uh, Sinner is was a big diamond a big song for Diamond Head we used to love the early Judas Priest albums things like. Sin After Sin and Sad Wings of Destiny. And uh, I'd go and, you know, in fact, several of us would go and see them when that, whenever they would come through town. They'd play the Birmingham Odeon and we'd go and watch Judas Priest. Uh, and, we, you know, I, I saw Black Sabbath a couple of times uh, at the Birmingham Odeon. Uh, so, you know, big... Big bands that influenced Diamond Head, really. Uh, uh, I wanted to do a Zeppelin, a, song, a Priest, uh, a Deep Purple song. Um, we, I mean, the choice of the Deep Purple song is a little bit unusual. It's, a, it's what you might call a, uh, a deep cut. Uh, because a lot of people go, oh, I, I don't remember that song, or, or I've never heard Rat Bat Blue before. And it's purely a, a song that... I really liked uh, it's off the album uh, Who Do We Think We Are, uh, which is the album after Machine Head, which is the big album. And I didn't want to do anything off Machine Head. I just thought it was too big. It's too famous. So I, I wanted to share a bit of love to a less well-known track that I think is really good. Uh, and also I wanted to do something that didn't have too much of John Lord's organ on it because Diamond Head doesn't have a keyboard player. So I wanted to do something that just worked from a guitar point of view, that worked with a, a two-guitar band. Mm-hmm. Well, and it does. 
<laughs> Thank you. Yeah, works very well. Because I remember listening to the tracks going, all right, immigrant song, cool, let's check it out. Uh, I had heard No Remorse, and to be perfectly honest, I thought you guys did a better job than Metallica did. But, I mean, I'm sure if they re-recorded it, it would probably sound different, too. Um, exactly, it would. You know. Because, you know, they'd have done that. That's their first album. They'd have done it fairly quickly you know they probably weren't used to being in the studio so so yeah your first album is is a real learning curve isn't it it's it's normally the first time in a big studio and i remember when we did our first album we we weren't used to playing to a click track and uh, we all had headphones on and the click track appeared in your in your cans and we hated it and we had to stop <laughs> we had to we had to stop and say oh whoa, 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 i can't un- have that cowbell going in my ear while I'm trying to play, while I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> and we, we, so we did the whole album without a click. I mean, now you have to, you've got, it's all digital, it's all pro tools, and it's all grids and all that. Uh, a, a producer now would just go mad if they said, we're not going to use a click track. But uh, uh, then, you know, it was all analog. And so it was just a bit more feel, I suppose. It was a bit more, if that bit speeds up, it don't really matter. But you, you couldn't really do that now. Or you'd have to program the click to, to move with you. <laughs> yeah. Have somebody sit, some poor guy sit there and post and put everybody in time. Yeah. <laughs> Quantize the audio. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Now, something you mentioned was the first album was a learning curve. Um, now, in re-recording this album, were you able to then think back to some of those things that maybe you had wished you had done back in 1980 when you when the album was originally released and do them now? Um, I, I don't really. Uh, I, I just think for the time, it, I really liked it back then in 1980. I thought it sounded great. Uh, and the only thing that's changed really is over the years, I've been playing these songs live, you know, a lot of times. The arrangement has changed a little bit on a couple of the songs. So I just thought right when we do it live, uh, sorry, when we record it now, let's at least do the live arrangements that have they've evolved you know like it's electric's got a different ending and uh there's a bit more uh, guitar in sweet and innocent than originally and things like that so of course it's almost like the live versions got captured for this album uh, rather than uh, you know the studio versions for the original album uh so i i feel you know I've played them so many times. They've evolved slightly, but uh, I've learned so much as a player over the years that uh, I'm, I'm able to add more technique and, and maybe get it more in time and in tune and get it to groove a bit more, you know. Mm-hmm. This time, instead of you being stressed out in the studio, the songs were stressed out in the studio. <laughs> What was that? I don't understand that. I'm sorry, you've lost me. <laughs> oh, it's okay. oh, it's okay. So, like, when you were recording the first time, maybe you were like, oh, man, there's a click track. We got to get rid of this thing. Yeah. Whereas yeah. now it's like, okay, song, come here. You're mine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was, you know, I, I, I as I say, I picked up a lot of technique over the years. So I'm not uh, I'm not scared of the red light or anything. Uh, and, and, you know, you, we... we, we uh, we got it down pretty quickly because I've been playing the song so many times. The only thing that we had to rehearse was the covers. We rec- we just had a couple of days where we went over the four covers, uh, uh, but we didn't have to rehearse to to do, to the Light into the Nations album because we've been playing them live. So it was it's a case of let's just do the live versions. I think probably uh, the singer Raz tone down his vocal a tiny bit uh, because of course live you're constantly projecting and you want the crowd to to come with you and so we probably dialed down the energy a little bit on the uh, the vocals but um, normally I think everybody else just we just played what we play live okay Did, I'm seeing a note here that the key may have changed as well did you guys change the key of some of the songs Actually, the whole album is in E flat uh, because I've been, you know, Diamond has been in E flat since about 1990, and uh, the original album is in standard. Uh, but around 1990, I, I, I tried 
you know, tuning down, and and we we did an album called Death and Progress, uh, and that's in E flat, and so I've stuck with that ever since. Uh, I, I think it sounds a bit heavy, a bit tougher, um, and I noticed bands like Thin Lizzy used to do it, and and Van Halen, and uh, a lot of bands do it now, and it, it, even Metallica apparently a lot of their albums are in standard tuning, but they play in E flat live, and I think it helps the vocal. Um, so I believe a lot of bands use E flat to help the vocal, uh, but we we just got into it, and uh, so yeah, the whole album is in E flat. It's down a semitone. Um, it's electric. We, I used to play it in the key of G, and then when Metallica recorded its electric for Garage Inc., uh, they transposed it to F sharp because it, it's easy to play. And uh, once I realized that and had a go at it, I thought, oh, okay, actually it's better their way. They figured out a better way to play its electric <laughs> than I did. And uh, so I do it their way now. I copied their uh, technique. <laughs> there we go. Like engineering on your own songs. Have somebody else look yeah. at it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, um, uh, now, speaking of the recording of this album, I've got to note that due to this craziness that we have this year, the album happened in pieces. Um, so go ahead and yeah. take us through this year. How much of a disruption did COVID-19 have or did things kind of go to plan minus obviously some shows? Yeah, all our gigs went. Uh, we haven't played for eight months now. Uh, our last gig was March the 8th, I believe. Uh, so that's been awful to have everything sort of wiped out. Uh, gigs that we've been looking forward to, festivals and uh, crews and all kinds of things are all gone. Anyway, but the record, we, we discussed making the record last year. Uh, and we had some rehearsals out before Christmas and then into January uh, where we got the covers together. Then we had dates, uh, but Carl, the drummer, had a chance to record the drums at home before lockdown, and uh, then it was a case of all the files would be sent over to Raz, who who who's, is the producer, uh, our singer, and he... Um, you know, once everything's been edited, I would go down and record the guitars. I did all the guitars at Raz's flat in like two days over a weekend. And then the other guitarists did the same. Then we went into lockdown at, at, on the 23rd of March. So after that, I was unable to, to go in, go down uh, again. But the bass player did it at home and uh, just sent in the, the bass parts as a wee transfer file. Uh, then Raz did all the vocals at home and mixed it. And um, we had to have it ready for the end of July. So uh, it, it, it's been very, very fortunate that we actually started the project before lockdown. And then we got to, to you know, make it and get it out uh, while we're in lockdown. Because otherwise, this whole year would have been a disaster. And we'd have had nothing no gigs, no, no product, nothing to come out, nothing for the fans, and nothing to celebrate the 40th anniversary of this Light to the Nations that, you know, that we plan to do, but, but things conspire against bands. And, uh, <laughs> but at least, as I say, I'm, I'm very, very pleased that we've managed to get this record done and out this year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned that it had to be ready by the end of July. So it sounds like the process was still uh, maybe you didn't have as much time as you had wanted or maybe you just didn't even probably didn't need that much time to do this. Eh? Yeah, not as no, uh, it, it still took probably a couple of months, but uh, it, it um, a lot longer than the original album, which was done, you know, recorded and mixed in a week. But uh yeah, the, the limitations of not being able to go back down and maybe, you know, I, I remember I missed a bit out on one of the guitars and I had to uh, do it at home and send those down as files. I forgot to do a couple of little bits. But, uh, you know, Raz at least had a bit of time to do vocals, uh, so he wasn't, you know, he wasn't being rushed. We just had to get it done, as I say, end of July, so... Uh, in a way, it's good to have a deadline because I think Raz would have probably kept fiddling and messing and and uh, t 
tweaking, you know, for, for a while had he not had a deadline. It, it's sometimes the best way to, right, it's got to be done. So you, 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 you get on with it and you get it finished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, for somebody to be in the band and do all of that work, it's, it's kind of curious how he kept, I don't know, his hat separate from. from yes. That. I agree. There's times when we're writing songs and he has to think, right, I'm, I'm, I'm a songwriter now. I'm, 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 and then tomorrow he's a lyricist. And then after that, he has to become the, the, engine, the recording engineer. And then finally, the mixing engineer. <laughs> and you're right, that, that is a lot to take on. Uh, a lot of responsibility. Uh, but I'm, I'm very glad. I mean, we're lucky to have uh, this talented chap in the band and uh, so to, to to make most use of him is to uh, let him let him do his thing mm -hmm. i agree beautiful sweet so brian we've chatted about the album we've chatted about some covers we chatted about covid19 um mm -hmm. how has the rest of the year gone since the album was it intended to be released in november or was it kind of like waiting to see if things might clear up a bit no, it was a case of in in order to get it out this year, we need to we needed to have it done for the end of July. So then it has to be mastered. Then they go to you know the pressing plant and blah blah blah. And I mean, we were told Amazon needed five weeks before they 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 start supplying it or something like that. Mm -hmm. So. There's a lot of there's a few several months maybe three four months of, of work that the label needs you know artwork blah 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 uh, to to get together to get it, to actually get it out so you know we delivered the album and then and then it just takes time to get you know the the, the, the vinyl done and the CDs and the etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and then you know set up promotion and and everything so uh, it, it wasn't planned it was a case of let we've got to get it out this year uh and that's it though so that was the goal that was the aim and and of course because we had no gigs we could focus on it and, and give it our best shot mm -hmm. and without doing any gigs have you guys been doing maybe some live streams or what has been i guess the plan to promote the record without traditional means yeah, we haven't done any live streams. Uh, we, we were offered a couple, but it, it seemed so complicated and, and financially risky uh, that we decided not to do do it in the end. Uh, the promotion has, has really been thanks to the label coming up with ideas. I've been doing interviews. Uh, I've, I've done sort of pop, yeah, not podcasts, um, like, like YouTube clips and um, We've, we've done three singles with a video for each single. Um, so we've been building it for, for months, really, and, and it's going really well. I mean, we've got a pretty good following anyway, and I think probably just the idea of, of being able to buy a new version of, of the original Light Into the Nations album has been, been, got, gone down very, very well. Um, the press I've seen and, and the reaction from, from the fans that I've spoke to uh, has been great you know I, I i haven't bumped into any fans really because of course we're not gigging uh but you get the odd email and you pick up the vibe here and there uh, and text messages and stuff that that they're all loving it and it's going it's going well mm -hmm. <laughs> so socially distanced bumping into fans <laughs> <laughs> yes Beautiful. Yeah, I was just on Spotify because all the covers are on CD and vinyl, um, but not digitally. So if anybody's looking for those uh, covers, they have to pick up the CD or the vinyl. Is that correct? I didn't know that. Okay. I didn't know. I thought you, it would all be up there on uh, YouTube and Spotify and what have you. Okay. I really didn't know. I mean, you may be right. I'll, I'll look into that. <laughs> okay uh because i was just there on spotify taking a look at it and i thought it was kind of funny the top five tracks the first three are am i evil <laughs> <laughs> what do you think's our biggest song <laughs> uh am i evil uh yeah i think so and then after that it's it's electric and no remorse so yes yes boom um i think it's pretty evident what you guys are known for here 
It looks like it. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to end up playing No Remorse live, aren't we, by the look of it? Mm -hmm. We'll get lynched. We'll get lynched otherwise. Instead of everybody shouting for Am I Evil, they're going to be shouting for No Remorse. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of... Oh, no! <laughs> well, speaking of YouTube, when the the track came out and I went to go listen to it, I was scrolling through the comments, and it's nothing but praise on the comments. Uh, yes, I, I I've seen some fantastic comments. Yes, um, it's very satisfying, very uh, rewarding to to see if people are enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Brian, did I miss anything? Was there anything that you wanted to chat about that I did not bring up? I don't think there is. Uh, you've covered you've covered everything. Uh, uh, and it's been a really good interview. Thanks, John. You are quite welcome. Well, thank you so much then for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. You're welcome. I enjoyed it. <laughs>